நண்பர்களுக்கு வணக்கம் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் திஸ் ப்ரோக்ராம் இஸ் பிராட் டு யூ பை குருஜி டிவி This YouTube video is a translation of the Tamil video of our renowned astrologer Jyotish Mahaguru Aditya Guruji. The link of the original version that is a Tamil video is given in the description box of this video. So far, I had explained the effects of the planets in the house of Aries, Taurus and Gemini and I also have explained the favorable and unfavorable dasha for the natives of aries ascendant taurus ascendant and gemini ascendant and professions related to the planets in this video i'm going to explain the effects of the planets in the house of cancer let us understand the nature of the house first of all and what will the sign of the cancer will deliver what are the unique characteristics of the sign of cancer You all know that there are 12 signs in the natural zodiac and also that every sign is important whether it is first house whether it's second house or whatever house in the natural zodiac In the natural zodiac in every sign full moon happens so in an year 12 full moon happens among the 12 full moons one of them must be most significant and one among them must be least significant The full moon that happens in the sign of Cancer is said to be very significant. This is one of the reason why Cancer is said to be the most significant sign in the natural zodiac. Having said this, Cancer is said to be the most significant sign in the natural zodiac. Among the 12 signs starting from Aries, Taurus, Gemini until the sign of Pisces, Cancer is said to be the most significant sign in the natural zodiac. Do you understand why the house of Cancer is said to be the most significant sign among all the signs in the natural zodiac? I will explain you the intricacy behind this concept. Indeed, you will understand these intricacies when you learn higher level of concepts in astrology. Among the 12 signs in the natural zodiac, Cancer is the unique sign. I have already explained in my videos that the signs are classified as mobile, fixed and dual signs that is Shara Rashis, Sthira Rashis and Upaya Rashis. Among the three categories, the movable signs that is Shara Rashi is the most significant. The next significant category is fixed sign that is Sthira Rashi. The third significant rashi is dual signs that is upaya rashis. We can find this variation among the signs and among the ascendants as well. The one who is born in the most significant ascendant becomes the greatest ruler. The whole world praises them. If you observe those who were born in the mobile sign they would be leaders or legends. and these are the people who makes revolution in the world or who brings renaissance in the world or will be authoritative person will be service minded they will be authoritative like leo therefore among the 12 signs in the natural zodiac cancer is the most significant house i will tell you now the reason for this there are three categories of the signs that is mobile fixed and dual signs the mobile signs are aries cancer libra and capricorn that is mesh kark tula and makar these are the most significant houses of the natural zodiac these four houses are the quadrant houses in the natural zodiac let me repeat aries cancer Libra and Capricorn are the quadrant houses in the natural zodiac. Aries is the first house, Cancer is the fourth house, Libra is the seventh house and Capricorn is the tenth house in the natural zodiac. Among these four houses, if you ask which is the most significant sign, 
it is cancer. Among these four movable signs, why cancer is said to be the most significant house? Because for the other movable signs, the house lord is the owner of two houses. Only for cancer, the house lord will be the owner of only one house. Let me add more. For Aries sign whose lord is Mars becomes the owner of the 8th house to the Aries. The 8th house is a fixed sign which is Scorpio. Therefore, when you are the native of Aries ascendant, the house lord itself becomes the lord of the 8th house and there will be a state where the house lord will deliver the house effects of the 8th house. Mars which is the house lord of Aries is also the house lord of the 8th house to Aries that is Scorpio. When you are born as Aries ascendant, Mars will be doing the house effects of the 8th house which is a bit harmful to the native. In the same fashion, when you were born as a native of Libra ascendant, the house lord of the Libra becomes the house lord of the 8th house and it will deliver the house effects of the 8th house which will spoil the native. For the native of Capricorn Ascendant, Saturn becomes the lord of the second house. That is, Saturn is also the house lord of the Aquarius, which brings death to the native as Saturn becomes Marakadipati. I hope you know, for a movable sign, the lord of the second house and the lord of the seventh house becomes Marakadipati, that is, which brings death to the native. So, among all the movable signs, Cancer is a sign whose house lord becomes the lord of the auspicious house and not the lord for any other inauspicious house unlike other movable signs. Therefore, among all the movable signs that is Chara Rashis, Cancer is the most significant sign in the natural zodiac. This is the truth. Among the 12 signs in the natural zodiac, Cancer is the most significant sign. The house lord of the cancer is the moon and it is called as the mother of all the planets in Vedic astrology. So the sign indicates motherly nature. The house lord of the cancer is the one that does not treat any other house as its enemy. So cancer becomes the most significant of all the movable signs and becomes the most significant house in the natural zodiac as well. I explain now the importance of the sign of Cancer and we will see the effects of the planets in the house of Cancer. Well, to start with, Cancer is a movable sign. Now, let us see the gender of the signs, whether it is masculine or feminine. Aries is masculine, Taurus is feminine, Gemini is masculine and Cancer is feminine. A motherly sign cannot be masculine, so Cancer is feminine. Please memorize all these. Cancer is the house of mother and family and among the category of odd or even sign, Cancer is an even sign. And it also represents the Panjabuddha Tattva, water. Yes, the Cancer is a watery sign. Please understand the importance of Tattvas, the categories of the signs, whether they are mobile, fixed or dual signs, the gender of the sign, etc. I have already said that Aries is a combination of mobile sign and fiery sign. The Libra is a combination of movable and Aries sign. The Capricorn is a combination of movable and earthy sign. Cancer is a combination of a movable and watery sign. The house lord of the cancer sign is the planet moon that moves very fast. It takes two days and a quarter to traverse the sign. Since cancer is a combination of movable sign and represents the water, it represents the flowing water. Can you tell me where you can find the water flowing? We can find the flowing water only in the rivers. The water in the river always flows. 
The pictorial representation of the cancer itself is a crab, which relates to the nature of the cancer sign. The cancer sign is filled with motherly nature. The moon is filled with such motherliness. So, the natives who are born as cancer ascendant are not selfish at all. They are very motherly in nature. When will the statement go wrong? The statement that I told you just now will not be true in case if the cancer house is affected by malefic such as Saturn, Mars or Rahu. Mars gets debilitated in the house of cancer and cancer is the inimical house to Saturn and Saturn is also the lord of eighth house to the cancer. And Rahu, needless to say, it is a dark and shadowy planet. The connection of these planets to the house of cancer will affect the characteristics of the native such as motherliness, selflessness, etc. If the house of cancer is not in connection with any malefic and in connection with the benefic, then the native of cancer ascendant or cancer rashi, I mentioned these points related to the house of cancer. Please remember, when I address as the house of cancer, you have to take into account all the statements that I made here for both Rashi and Ascendant. Well, the house of cancer is a watery sign. There are three watery signs. They are Cancer, Scorpio and Pisces. Cancer sign is a combination of movable and watery sign. Scorpio is a combination of fixed and watery sign. Pisces is a combination of a dual and watery sign. Now, let me explain the difference between these watery signs. Cancer is a combination of movable and watery sign. So, the sign represents the water that is not still flowing water. For example, a river. Scorpio is a combination of fixed and watery sign. The water is still and surrounded by land on all sides, for example, lakes, ponds, pools, wells, etc. And Scorpio represents even a bucket of water as it is bounded on all sides by the container itself. If you throw the water away on the floor, then the flowing water is represented by cancer. And what does the Pisces represent? The Pisces represent the sea where the water is both still and moving. In the sea, there are certain areas where the water is still and certain areas where the undercurrent water flows. So Pisces represent both the still water and the water that flows. Sometimes I used to predict for certain subscribers regarding their overseas ventures. If you understand the nature of the sign, that is whether they are movable, fixed or dual, the Panjabuda Tattva, gender and other characteristics of the sign and how they behave, then you will understand and can predict if native can travel overseas or to other states within the country. We can predict whether the person will travel overseas or not. I will definitely teach you all these in the higher level classes. You have to check whether the dasha of the planet related to movable and watery sign is happening or related to cancer is happening or whether the person is ascendant of cancer sign or Scorpio sign or Pisces sign. We also have to take into account the planetary transit. We can predict whether a person will travel across a river or sea based on all these factors. When I predict that a person is going to travel across a river, it signifies that the person is going to travel to the neighboring state or another state. If I predict that a person will travel across the sea, it signifies that he or she is going to travel abroad. I would like to add another point here. The planets in the Cancer will help a person 
to travel across the river or sea. Let me explain the logic behind these concepts. In olden days, India was not a single country. India is indeed a conglomeration of many kingdoms. During the era of astrology, India was not a single country, rather it was divided into many kingdoms. Even our state, Tamil Nadu, was classified as Chera, Chola and Pandya kingdoms. If you want to go to the Chola kingdom, you have to travel across the river Kaveri. If you want to go to the Pandya kingdom, you have to cross the river Vaige. If you want to go to the Chalukya state, you have to travel across the river Kaveri, Narmada or the river Tungabhadra. If you want to go to northern India, you have to travel across the Ganges. So, when you want to travel to a neighboring state or an overseas country, you have to travel across a river or sea. This is the logic behind the concept based on which we identify whether a person has a chance to go abroad and please do not forget to take into account the directions as well like north, south, etc. I almost finished explaining the characteristics about cancer. I don't want to teach you very mechanically. Therefore, before explaining the effects of the planets in the house of cancer, it is very important to know the nature of the sign and then to understand the effects of the planets in the house of cancer. I am not someone who merely explains the effects of the planets in a particular house in the natural zodiac without giving you the fundamental knowledge about the houses in the natural zodiac. First of all, you should understand the nature of the cancer house. The house of cancer is a watery sign, movable sign, feminine sign, even sign. The sign is of motherly nature. Therefore, it is significant to understand the characteristics of the cancer sign. What does the cancer sign indicate? The house of cancer represents the professions that are related to places of flowing water, rivers, river banks, liquids, etc. You can very well see that the pictorial representation of the cancer is a crab. It indicates cancer is all about the watery places. The house indicates selflessness and responsibility. A mother can behave selfishly in regard to others. But as far as her own children are concerned, the mother will not be selfish at all. The mother is the only human being who can sacrifice even her little portion of food to the children and can sleep starving with satisfaction. The important point to note here is satisfaction. The mother can sleep starving with satisfaction. So the house of cancer denotes the mother's place and the moon represents the mother. I have explained about the cancer house now. The house lord of the cancer is the moon. If you need to know anything more about the house of cancer, you can write it in the comment section of this video. I can explain those in the next videos of mine. So far, I have explained the characteristics of the Cancer House. Now, let me explain the effects of the planets, the effects of each planet in the House of Cancer. I hope you know which planets are friendly to the Cancer House. The friendly planets to the Cancer House are Sun, Moon, Mars and Jupiter. The shadow planet which supports Cancer is Ketu. Let me explain now the effect of the planet in the house of Cancer. As usual, I will start with the planet Sun. Let me tell you what would be the effect of the Sun in the house of Cancer. The Sun is in the 12th house from its own house Leo when it is in the house of Cancer. The sun is an authoritative planet and such a planet is in the house of cancer. That is 12th from its own house. Leo is like the house of the father 
and cancer is like the house of a mother our mother is the wife of her father and when the son is in the house of cancer it is in the hidden house you can understand the concept of the houses of father and mother by merely observing the position of the bride and the groom during the hindu marriage ceremony imagine the natural zodiac as a royal court and sun as king in leo imagine the series of houses in the natural zodiac after leo as the courtiers of the king imagine the cancer and the leo as the queen and the king the queen and the king or the mother and father or seated in the royal throne in the middle of the royal court and all the others are surrounding them this is the logic behind the concept of light energy the primary source of light energy moon and sun that is mother and father or the queen and the king are seated in the middle of the royal court and all the other planets are around them to receive light from them we can imagine other planets as advisors army chief and the common people of the royal court i have to explain all these by pictures and i will do this in the higher level of astrology classes definitely i will start the online classes soon and you will explore more about astrology i will explain the most important points in the higher level classes of astrology and i will definitely start the astrology classes soon i hope you will have observed that i have nothing in my hand like a book or notes while explaining the concepts and you can expect all the important points in the higher level astrology online classes well let us come back to the point sun is in the 12th house from its own house the cancer is a friendly house to the sun the planet moon is friendly to the sun based on the strength of the house lord of cancer that is moon that is based on the light energy of the dispositor sun will deliver its benefits this point is very important when sun is in the house of cancer it is in the month of adi that is ashart that is mid july to mid august i would like to ask a question which is the most auspicious day in the month of adi it is the festival of tiruvonam when the moon resides in the star of tiruvonam and sun in cancer the day is celebrated as the avatar day of mahavishnu it is celebrated as vamana avatara of lord mahavishnu in this case the sun is aspected by full moon which has a lot of light energy which is very strong and it is auspicious apart from this the sun should not be placed in the 12th house from its own house which is an authoritative house that is leo in some cases there will be some shortcomings due to this reason if the sun is positioned in chandra kendra that is the quadrant house to the moon it is an antidote therefore when the sun resides in the house of cancer it is auspicious in any situation when the sun is subhatwa in the house of cancer it becomes more auspicious in case if it is in conjunction with venus it is more subhatwa when it is in conjunction with mercury the sun will not be comfortable now let me explain the effect of the next planet in the house of cancer which is the moon during the dark moon or amavasya day in the month of adi that is ashad that is mid july to mid august the moon will be in conjunction with the sun in the house of cancer there are three stars where the moon can reside when it is in cancer they are punarpusam that is punarvasu pusam that is pushya ailyam that is ashlesha the moon should not reside in any of these three stars i always suggest that you have to make predictions based on the light energy of the moon i would like to add a point that even during amavasya if either sun or moon is strong then there is no amavasya dosha having said this point when moon is in the house of cancer in conjunction with sun with no light energy that is during amavasya 
since the moon is in its own house based on certain gravity concepts certainly the amavasya moon at cancer will be better in comparison to other amavasya moons that is the amavasya moons in other houses so don't be concerned when the moon is in the house of cancer with amavasya status therefore when moon is in the house of cancer it is favorable during the month of tai that is paush that is mid january to mid february and when moon resides in the star of pusam that is pushya the day was celebrated as tai pusam the moon is full moon in the house of cancer during the month of tai when the moon is full moon in the house of cancer the sun will be in capricorn the moon will have great light energy and the full moon during the month of tai that is paush is very very significant it is one of the most auspicious full moon days it might be the third or fourth full moon in a year therefore the moon in the house of cancer during the month of tai that is mid january to mid february is very auspicious even when the moon is in the status of amavasya in the house of cancer it will not deliver much worse effects the reason behind this concept is the moon is in its own house when it is in the house of cancer at any moment the moon should not be in conjunction with saturn or rahu however in any situation the moon can be in conjunction with mars i hope you have noticed that i have not taken into account the mars under the list of malefic planets i mentioned that the moon should not be in connection with saturn or rahu and i did not mention mars because mars is such an understanding planet to the moon which is a watery planet and mars is a fiery planet if these two compete the watery planet will succeed the fire can be extinguished by pouring the water the fire cannot stand the power of the water water has more strength than the fire at this moment i would like to mention why fire is used as a significant and predominant element while performing the yagna there is a great logic and philosophy behind each and every hindu ritual fire is used dominantly in every yagna that is yagam do you know the reason why we use fire while we do yagam or yagna while we do yagam that is yagna every puja or homa is done with fire i just now mentioned that water is more powerful than fire in contrast now i say the significance of the fire in the yagna every yagna is done with fire as a significant element there are great logics behind these concepts the elements of nature plays an important role in rituals and ceremonies water when it receives something it does not change or transform the nature of what it receives the water cannot change the shape of the object it receives when you throw an object in the water such as wooden log water will not suddenly change it it will remain in water but the fire has the ability to transform whatever it receives wood might be eroded in course of time in water but the fire will transform the object that it receives sooner now do you understand why we perform yagna that is yagam with the help of fire when we offer something in havana kunta that is yaga kuri or fire altar the fire is considered as a medium to deliver the offerings whatever we dedicate in the yagam or yagna to the respective deities whatever oblations are dedicated in the holy fire the fire delivers it to respective deities in the havana kunda that is yaga kuri that is altar of fire we dedicate even sarees and gold to the goddess where the fire takes the responsibility to deliver all those oblations to the respective goddess 
to whosoever we would like to dedicate the oblations, the fire acts as a medium to deliver it to the respective deities. So please try to understand the difference between water and fire in Hindu rituals. So water is more powerful than fire. Since the fire has the capability to transform whatever it receives as itself. Water is more powerful than the fire. Since the fire has the capability to transform whatever it receives, the importance is given to the fire during the Havana. The fire is like a husband that can be cooled by the wife, which is the moon. This is why Cancer and Leo are said to be the most significant houses in the natural zodiac. So, when Mars is in conjunction with the moon in Cancer, Mars gets debilitated, but since the moon is in conjunction with Mars, it gets the cancellation of debility, that is, Nichabanga status. In the upcoming video, I will explain the effects of the other planets in the house of Cancer. Thank you. The link of Aditya Guruji's website is given below in the description box of this video that is accessible by both iOS and Android users. The link of the Google app is also given in the description box that is available only for Android users. The Tamil version of this video is also available. Please check the description box. Write your feedback to astro.writeus at gmail.com. Thank you.